So here we have two numbers. Can you find the LCM and GCF? So if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then I'm going to tell you exactly what the LCM is and the GCF. And then we're going to go through step by step on how to answer this question. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now and we'll start off with the LCM. All right, so the LCM stands for the, it's either the lowest or the least common multiple. So, I mean, this right here, common, that's word, hopefully, you know, if we have something in common, that makes sense. Least or lowest, that makes sense. But what is a multiple? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. And you can see uh, that I already kind of have uh, the work written out here. I like to kind of uh, teach this in this manner first so we can really understand uh, what a multiple is. But there's basically two approaches that we could use to answer this question or what the uh, LCM or to find the LCM given two or more numbers. All right, so first of all, let's just go ahead and get into the acronym here, least common multiple. Well, what's a multiple of 18? Well, a multiple is just taking the number that you have and multiplying it by one, then multiplying it by two, and then multiplying it by three, et cetera, right? So 18 times one is 18. That's a multiple of 18. 18 times two is 36. 36 is a multiple of 18. 18 times three, is 54 that's a multiple of 18 you get the idea so i can just go on and on and on starting from one two three four five six and just could continue to build a list of multiples now i'm going to continue to build a, a list of multiples here for 18 and then i'm going to do the same thing for 60 so 60 times one is 60 60 times two is 120 and 60 times three is 180 so i would make my list of multiples for 60. And of course, you know, these are uh, infinite uh, lists. They go on forever and ever, but you want to write enough numbers so you can identify common multiples, okay? And in particular, you want the lowest or the least common multiple. So as we see here, 60, 120, 180, I'm looking, is there a 60 in my list here for 18, my list of multiples? No, I don't see a 60. There's no 60 there. Is there 120? No, there's 126. Is there a 180? Yes, there is. So these are common multiples. And matter of fact, it, they are the least common multiples. So that's one approach uh, to find the LCM between two numbers. That's what it stands. That's what the acronym stands for: the least common multiple. Okay. So now let's talk about another way we can uh, find the answer to this question. So let's suppose that I said find the LCD, the lowest common denominator. And we had this fraction, 1 over 18 plus 7 over uh, these two fractions here. We wanted to add them up, and uh, the denominators were 18 and 60. Okay, notice we're dealing with the same numbers. So here, you would want to find the LCD. Well, the LCD is effectively the LCM of the numbers in the denominator. So if you know how to find the LCD, okay, effectively you are finding the LCM. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that right now. Now, uh, there's different, a couple different ways you can um, uh, approach finding the LCD, but basically there is one kind of uh, set procedure, okay? And I'm gonna show it to you right now. So here's our two numbers, 18 and 60. What you wanna do is prime factor uh, the respective numbers in the, uh, in the denominator, or in this case, uh, these two numbers that we're trying to find the LCM. So 18 is the same thing as 9 times 2 or 6 times 3. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. You can build a factor tree. What we're trying to do is identify all the prime factors. So you can see this 2 is a prime factor of 18. And then 9, 9 is not prime. So I can continue to factor 9 into th uh, 3 times 3. We can't forget this 2 here. So 18 is the same thing as th these prime numbers uh, being multiplied, right? These are the factors 3 times 3 times 2 because of course three times three is nine times two that's 18. so these are the prime factors and you always want to write any uh, multiple or repeating factors as a power so three times three let's write that as three squared so 18 is equal to three squared times two and you'll see why this is important here in a second 
All right, so 60 is 6 times 10. Again, you can, you can go different paths here. You'll still get the same answer. So 6 and 10 are both of these can continue to be factored. So that's 3 times 2, which is prime. And uh, 10 is 2 times 5, which is prime. So let's go ahead and write these as prime factors. So here, 2 times 2, I can write as 2 squared. And then I have a 3 and I have a 5. Okay, so now let's go ahead and identify the LCD. Now the LCD, okay, these, this is the same. Uh, this is the same step as finding uh, the LCM. Okay, so in other words, you can just kind of think to yourself, oh, these are the denominators. How do we find it? Well, what you need to do is you need to have all the prime factors. You're going to have one. You're going to have a product. Okay, uh, so it's going to be something. Okay, right here times something else times something else, and these are all prime factors. Prime factor. Prime factor. Prime factor prime factor of all the prime factors that you've got between your two numbers or two or more numbers. So here is our list of prime factors and here is our list of prime factors. And what we need to do is have each prime factor that we have represented in this uh, product. Okay, you'll see how this works here in a second. So let's start off with um, twos. Okay, we'll just go in orders. So here we have a three squared two, a two squared three and five because these are all of our prime factors between these two numbers. Let's start off with two. So here I have a two to the first, and here is a two squared. So the question is, do I need to write a two to the first in my LCD or LCM? Well, what you need to do is when you have two um, uh, numbers, or they're the same number, same uh, base, in other words, two to the first and two to the second, you always take the one with the highest power. That's the only one you need as a factor of your LCM. Okay, so that's two squared. We don't need the two to the first. We always take the highest representation of that number. So two to the first or two squared, we're gonna take the highest power of two, two squared. Okay, so now let's go ahead and deal with the threes. We have three squared and here is three or three to the first. Which one are we gonna take? Well, we're gonna take the highest power of that number that would be 3 squared, okay? And again, this is going to be separated by multiplication. And then we have this 5 right there we got to add in. So our LCM or LCD, however you want to think about this, is going to be 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. And 5 is, of course, 5. And if you multiply all this together, guess what you're going to get? 180, okay? Which, of course, is the lowest common multiple or the LCD of these uh, two fractions right here. Okay, you see how all this kind of comes into play? Now this procedure I just um, shows you factoring and having a list of prime factors. This is really, you know, very important. Okay, you need to understand this. And most people are like, oh yeah, LCD, I can, I can find LCD. It, of course, if you had a fraction like uh, one third plus two fifths, you're like, just, you know, uh, give me some LCD questions. Oh yeah, that's 15, LCD is 15. These are easy numbers. But when you get into more interesting numbers, you need to understand the procedure involved. Okay, so that is the LCM, okay, which of course you can think of that as LCD, but again, it's just another way of finding the lowest common multiple. All right, let's get into the GCF. This is completely different. The GCF is the greatest common factor. Okay, so, you know, we're using this word common, but we're dealing with factors and we're looking for the greatest. The other one was the least and what we're dealing with multiples and here we're dealing with factors and we're dealing with greatest. So what is a factor? Well, if I have a number like 10, factors of 10 are 2 and 5. Okay, these would be factors. They're prime factors, but basically factors are numbers such that uh, when you multiply them, okay, the product of those factors, you get back to that number, okay? All right, so what is the greatest common factor of 18 and 60? Let me uh, skip this step here real quick. Let's just go down here, okay? If I have 18 and 60, and I wanna factor this in different ways, we're like, okay, 18 is the same thing as six times three, and 60 is the same thing as six times 10. Well, these are right here, six would be the greatest common factor, all right? In other words, 60 um, and uh, 18 both have six as a factor, and it is the largest number that is a factor between both of these numbers, okay? So uh, how can we kind of really know that, you know, like 100%? Like here, like, well, maybe there's another factor. Maybe uh, it's 18, does 18 go into 60, et cetera, et cetera? Well, 
Let's take a look at this factor tree and see how you can find the GCF by all this work that we just did right here, okay? So let's go back to our prime factors. We've got 18 and 60. So when we look at the list of all the prime factors, let's see what factors they have in common, right? 18 and 60. Remember, we're talking about common factors. Well, they have a three. So 18 is three times three times two, but 60 only has one three. Remember, this is the list of all its prime factors. This is the list of all the prime factors of 18. This is the list of all, all the prime factors of 60. They only have one three in common. Uh, although 18 has another three, they only have one three in common, okay? So we can say, in other words, it's one for one. I can't take this three unless there was another three over here. So three and three, they have a three in common, and they also have a two in common as a factor, okay? So here's another three. There's no other three over here. Uh, there, This has another two, but there's no, other two, no other, there's no other two over here, and there's no five. So three and two are the common factors that 18 and 60 have uh, common prime factors, and we just multiply these together, three times two, and we would have six, okay? So you might be surprised, you're like, oh yeah, you know, um, with easy numbers, the GCF, the LCM, the LCD, you know, like, uh, yeah, I don't, I just forgot all this stuff, I don't wanna deal with it, I'm in algebra now, I get to use a calculator, and I don't need to remember all this stuff. Well, again, Nothing could be further from the truth. If you want to be strong in high school or college level mathematics, you need you need to you know be strong in arithmetic. Okay, you still need strong arithmetic skills, and it's definitely worthwhile to review these concepts. Now, if you need help with basic arithmetic uh, level mathematics, check out my um, Math Foundations mini course. You can again find it at my Math Help program. It's only a three chapter little review of all the things that. You know, all the uh, key things that you learn in elementary school and middle school mathematics. We're talking like percent, place value, fractions, order of operations, LCM, LCD, all that kind of good stuff like that. So if you want a quick re uh, refresher course on elementary level math, I would suggest that. But if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.